There is a garden, there is a city, and there's a kingdom of God. And it is beautiful, and he is bringing it right now into our midst. Well, moms, today is your day. It's a day to say thank you for loving us, caring for us, and guiding us. It's a day to recognize all you do and all you are to us. You're perfect, wonderful, amazing children. Thanks for all the early mornings and for taking care of the things we take for granted. Thanks for never giving up on us, even when we stress you out. Thanks for making sure we have what we need and for giving us your heart even when you're sick and tired. Thanks for working hard even when we're a handful and for loving us unconditionally when our attitude is anything but lovable. You're our everything, Mom, and we'd be a mess without you. Today, we thank God for the wonderful gift of you. Happy Mother's Day. What a fun video that was. Man, we've had some great video resources this week by moms, about moms, and for moms, really for all of us. Uh, you can go back and watch them whenever you want. They are all uh, on Living Word Resources box on our homepage. All you have to do is click that box and it'll take you right to them. Uh, also, our Next Gen team has put together a super fun, practical way for families to love on mom. It's called A Family's Guide to a Quarantine Mother's Day. So you just go to our homepage, find the Next Gen Resources box, click it on, and there it is front and center. And also, for those of you who are using our church app, all those resources are right there. Hey, just go ahead and look around a little bit. Our app is great. You'll have fun just seeing what all is there. And a happy Mother's Day, happy Mother's Week to moms everywhere. Hey, Kendall has also put together a really nice devotional for this week on Mothers in the Bible. When we looked at the stories of moms in the Bible, man, there are some really impressive mothers who are great role models for us, even today, especially about how moms can live with faith, hope, and love. So uh, I'd like this time that we have to be kind of some audience participation. And if you're a part of the online chat group, it's gonna be really, really easy. Uh, there'll be times when you can post your comments in the chat, the box. There's other times you can kind of click on that heart icon to respond. Uh, if you are by yourself at home or if you're in the car, you can talk out loud. If you're with others, well, you decide if you want to mumble or be quiet or talk out loud, that's your choice. But hey, so let's practice for a moment. Um, for those of you who are online on the chat, just click the heart to say, I love my mom. And anywhere else, just go ahead and say it out loud, I love my mom. And the kids, if any of you are, are with your mom right now, just go and give your mom a really big hug and say, mom, I love you. Just go ahead and do it. A couple of your kids, group hug, you know, just mom, I love you. And, and now while your mom's feeling the love, ask for a raise in your allowance and see what she says. Hey, uh, I know that not everybody has had equally positive relationships with their moms. Some of us have had uh, painful memories about some difficult experiences. I have a sermon short that we're going to post on Monday morning. And that has a few practical suggestions to help you if this is kind of true for your situation. But for Mother's Day, let's plow ahead with a real positive look at our moms. And I'd like to use my mom uh, to talk about a few biblical themes that I think will be real helpful. And I'll have four different themes, four different things I want to say about her. But just to get started, I'd like to kind of introduce you to my mom with a few different snapshot thoughts. Uh, first of all, mom was born in Dallas Town and she graduated from Dallas Town High School. So everybody in Dallas Town, give yourself some love right now. She was a Dallas Town girl through and through. Uh, here's a picture of my mom, by the way, with her mom and dad. Uh, there, of course, my brother and myself are in that picture. Dad's the one taking the picture, so that's why you see the empty chair. Uh, by the way, uh, here is uh, Grandpa and Grandma again. And my Grandpa Sowers died early, and I spent a lot of time with Grandma Sowers. She taught me how to play 500 rum. I declare war. Man, that game would just go on and on forever. Uh, go fish. All right, uh, here's a picture of my dad's mom and dad, Grandpa and Grandma Rice. And here's Grandma Rice late in life. Man, I'm just really grateful for my grandparents. And here's the second thing about mom. She graduated from nursing school, Lancaster General Hospital. By the way, <laughs> that was the only time in her life she had, she had lived outside of York. She made it all the way across the river to Lancaster. And look at that picture. She is rocking that nurse's hat, man. 
All right, um, here's a third thing about mom. She lived in one house in East York for almost 55 years. Uh, we moved there in 1963 and she stayed there until she died in uh, 2017. So she started in Dallas town, she lived in Spry for a little while and then Winterstown, but she finished in York Suburban and uh, Yorkshire. All right, fourth thing, I, you just gotta know this about my mom, is she made the best meatloaf ever. And what was even better was cold meatloaf sandwiches the next day. Now, the reason I had cold meatloaf sandwiches was because my brother never liked meatloaf, so we always had leftover meatloaf. Until the day when my brother actually tried my mom's meatloaf and decided, hey, it was really good. And after that, I never had another cold meatloaf sandwich again. Mom refused to make a second pan of meatloaf. Bad mom. Well, actually good mom, bad brother. All right, here's another thing about my mom. She was a collector. Now, by the way, she collected good stuff. Hummel figurines, Yadro porcelain from Spain, bells, <laughs> angels, all kinds. This was a little pewter angel. And mom loved butterflies. And, and here are these silk butterflies on silk flowers and it's encased in glass. And those are just some things that mom loved to collect. By the way, I'm a collector and I think I get my collecting tendencies from mom. So when mom died, I took two of her really big antique display cabinets where she would have all of her stuff. And now I have my stuff on display. Hey, Becky, you go ahead and give a shout out about my collecting uh, habits. Oh man, and mom was an extrovert, a major extrovert. She talked to strangers all the time and I do too. It just seems really natural. Um, mom hated dandelions. I hate dandelions. Mom loved the Bradford pear trees that were lining Marcus Street in downtown York. They would flower every spring. I love those trees also. Um, mom loved made for Hallmark TV movies, okay? I don't love those movies. I, I wanna be really clear here. I don't want any rumors going around that Pastor Brian likes to watch Hallmark TV movies. I don't. But mom watched every episode of Walker, Texas Ranger with Chuck Norris. She loved Chuck Norris. And she watched Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune every day. Alex, Pat, and Vanna White, they were the only celebrities that mattered to mom. Although she did like Tom Selleck too. You know, here's the last little snapshot about mom. She just got better and deeper as the decades went by. I'm gonna come back to that a little bit later. Okay, everyone, everywhere, I want, you to work with, I want you to work with me on this one. So your mom, off the top of your head, what's the first thing about her that comes to mind? Go ahead and think about it. Okay, let's do it again. What's another thing about your mom that comes to mind right away? Okay, here's the third time and the final time. Your mom, what's one more thing about her that comes to mind? And by the way, if you're on the online chat, go ahead and jot down a couple of things about your mom. Just tell some other people, hey, my mom was this. And, uh, but you know what? Uh, here's what else you can do. Sometime today on social media, just jot down like, here are three things about mom. Here are five things about mom. I just want to give a shout out to my mom. These are the things that we remember and the things we love about our moms. You know, it is a little hard to talk about moms because moms are so different. Moms come in all varieties. Uh, their situations are so different. Their personalities are different. Their backgrounds, their environments, their love languages are different. By the way, when you check out that next generation resource on how to have a good you know, Mother's Day in quarantine, you're gonna find the handout is broken down into different ways that families can love their mom according to the love language that mom has. But moms are different. They have different callings. They have different gifts. Our moms have different challenges and burdens. So it is a little hard to make sweeping statements that apply to all moms all the time. But with that said, I do believe that nurturing is at the core of a mom's heart. Do you know the Bible uses nurturing, protecting, caregiving images of motherhood to describe what God is like? I mean, I like that. Sure, the most sensual images are as God the Father, but there are times when God's nurturing and protection is described in metaphors that remind us of motherhood. Like, like in Hosea, when Hosea describes God like a bear robbed of her, her cubs. Now, by the way, I'm not including the next verse because you go out and read what that bear robbed of her cubs is doing to the robbers, man, it's not pretty. Uh, Isaiah chapter 66 uses this language. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. You know, whenever Matt as a little guy was hurt, 
He wanted mom. Dad just wasn't good enough. He wanted mom. So there was one time when Matt and I were carrying on a little too energetically and I wasn't paying attention and Matt got hurt. Now, not super hurt, but it looked bad enough. So here's this little guy and he's hurting and he's bleeding and he's crying. And it happened at church while Becky's leading a study group. And he, he doesn't want anything to do with that. He just wants mom and he goes looking for mom, you know, crying and bleeding. And when mom sees him bleeding, I'm just doing my best. I experienced firsthand that scripture about mama bear and her cub, and it wasn't pretty. You know, in the New Testament, Jesus uses this language, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. You know, I, I believe that this, this is woven deep into the heart of a mother to nurture, to protect, to hover over, to care for. I'm not saying that every mother does this equally well, but it, it does seem to be core to the experience of what it means to be a mom. Now, my mom wasn't a gushy caregiver, but she was a caregiver. Uh, she was a nurse by profession. She did take care of people all the time. She had empathy for people. As a visiting nurse, her territory uh, was a lot of Southern York County, all the way down to the Maryland line, you know, some really, really uh, impoverished areas of time. And, and there's actually a picture of mom that one day she's walking down a railroad track to get to somebody's house because she get cut there by car. She had to park and go walking uh, down a railroad track to get to where this person lived. And there she is carrying her nurse's bag to go visit somebody who was in need. You know, mom saw a lot of bad situations with a lot of hurting people. So I had to be pretty hurt to arouse a lot of her concern. But I was always on her mind, always on her mind. Um, all through college, almost every week, I would get a handwritten letter, several pages from mom. Didn't matter whether I wrote back or not, every week there was a new letter from mom. After I graduated from college, I lived at home for two years before I went to grad school. And you know, mom could never fall asleep if I was out late. When I got home and I'm walking back the hall to my bedroom, I'd hear my mom's voice, Brian, is that you? No, mom, it's a burglar. That's what I wanted to say. But I say, yes, mom, good night. And she say good night. And then now that I was home, she could fall asleep. Isn't that what's, what the mother's heart is all about? Okay, here's the second thing. Uh, today, every mom has to make her way. The family situations that moms deal with and come out of today, there's just so much more complex than what my mom uh, had to deal with. By the way, do you know in 1970, 42% of families were nuclear families. That actually might surprise you. You might think, oh, it must have been 70 or 80%. No, not even close. You know, 50 years ago, 42% of our families were nuclear families. And now, now in 2020, only 50 years later, it's down to 22%. Families have changed so much. And because families have changed, motherhood has had to change. Although in her time, this is back in now the 1960s, mom and dad were really pretty cutting edge, pretty leading edge. So mom wanted to be a nurse. She wanted to work. And she wanted a family, and she wanted children and a home. So mom and dad worked it out together. Mom spent most of her nursing career working with the visiting nurse association. She was gone uh, in, in the morning and she won't get home to about 4.30 or 5. And after she retired from the VNA, she did private duty nursing uh, uh, for a few more years. In many ways, my mom was this like Proverbs 31 woman. Mom and dad provided for the family as partners. She and dad raised my brother and I as a team. Mom and dad together, that's how mom learned to make her way and enjoy all the things that mattered the most. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, we, uh, moms, today, how about you? you know, moms, you are God's handiwork. You're created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for you to do. You know, you pick up that devotional and you look at the stories of the, of the biblical mothers we have, and you're going to see, man, their circumstances were, were so different and the works they were given were so different. But each one of them, with God's help, they learned how to make their way doing the things that mattered the most. And, and moms, every mom today, despite how vastly different your circumstances are, with God's help, you'll make your way to. And I hope you're going to find a lot of support as you do that. Here's the third thing about mom. She was gritty. Uh, when I did my sermon on grit and resilience during our character series, and that was back in February, by the way, I really pray all of you are pretty gritty and resilient in these COVID-19 days. I really hope you are. 
But during the sermon in February, I actually used my dad for a whole, whole bunch of illustrations. I could have used my mom, and I'd like to use her right now. Here's, here's how gritty my mom was. Mom was a childhood diabetic, and she was ruthless about taking care of herself. Boy, talk about those biblical values of self-discipline and self-control. I don't know, maybe it was her nursing background that helped, but mom just soldiered on and she kept her blood sugar level low for 70 plus years. Um, just a few years before she died, I, I, I took her to a doctor's appointment and I'm back there with her and, and the doctor says, Brian, your mom is about the healthiest diabetic patient I have ever had. For all of you who have diabetes or there's a diabetic in your family, you know the hassles and difficulties that go with just staying healthy. Diabetics, you just get gritty and you keep on going. And mom just gritted up and kept going. But her grittiness ramps up even more. Mom was a widow for about 20 years. And I tell you, she really missed dad. Mom and dad loved to travel. I mean, here's just one of the many pictures I have of them. They're in Williamsburg in 1980. They just had such a great time. Here's one of the very last trips they had while dad was still alive is in San Diego. By the way, here's a picture of mom and dad. They traveled up from York to New York uh, to be with Becky, uh, Matt and I on Christmas. Uh, that was the last Christmas they had together. That was 1997. Dad got a really fast acting cancer and he would be dead before Christmas of 98. But boy, they did a lot of life together. And when dad died at age 67, mom had to soldier on as a widow. And she did. You know, many of you listening right now, you have moms that they're widows and then they, they just keep on keeping on. And right now, I, I just think of, of a number of my friends who are just so committed to taking care of aging parents, aging moms. I just want to give a shout out to every child who is taking really good care of your mom. I mean, I'd like to give a shout out to my brother as an example of a son who took great care of mom. But there's even more ramping up on mom's grittiness. So about two years before she died, mom came down with this horrible case of neuropathy. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a nerve pain that diabetics deal with. Like mom, because she was so healthy, she just never had to deal with neuropathy. But here she is at age 80 with neuropathy. And the, and the neuropathy that she had was in this femoral nerve of her leg. It's a really big nerve. And man, her pain levels were like 15 on a scale of 10. And she was taking as much gabapentin as you can take to calm down the nerves. That wasn't working. And then she was taking all these other oxy pain medications, which she hated to take. You know, her doctor <clears throat> told her she was going to have extreme pain for a while, maybe six months, maybe longer. And then at some point, it would most likely go away. But talk about confronting the brutal facts and not losing hope. Mom cried every single day and my mom was tough and there's nothing I could do but just sit with her and keep her company I, I think it was about at that six month point it, she just gritted and gutted her way through the pain and then about at that six month point one day I stopped over and she looked better and she said boy the pain was less and about a week after that she said she felt like herself again moms everywhere. So many of you just grit it out as the years go by. And we'd love you for it. We respect that like inner resilience that keeps you going. Here's the last thing. And I, boy, I sure hope this is true about your mom because my mom got better with age. Mom never stopped growing. She never stopped learning. She never stopped changing. Uh, boy, it was so exciting to see her Christian faith get deeper as the years went by. Anytime I stopped there at the house, there's, there on the kitchen table is her daily devotional, her Bible, and her church bulletin with prayer requests. My mom was always generous, but the older she got, the more generous she became. You know, she loved to support her church. She loved the ministry of the Rescue Mission. Now it's called Light Path. Uh, mom served clearly at a mission over in Lancaster. She served constantly at her church. She was just so generous with her, her resources and her time. Here's another thing about mom. She had never been a reader. Somewhere around age 75, she started reading for the first time at age 75. And she became such an avid reader. She got to the place where she was reading about a book a day. And when she died, I took boxes of her books to a, 
uh, a local used bookseller, and I tell you, her books were in great, great condition. Here's another thing about mom. She became a sports fan in her 70s. She never liked sports. Now, dad did, mom didn't. All right, let me, let me make one correction here. Mom didn't become a sports fan. She became a fan of one sport. Actually, that's not even right. Mom became a fanatical fan of one team in one sport. All right, take a minute and guess what the one sport and the one team was. See if you can figure out my mom's one sport and one team. All right, I'll give you a clue. Coach K. Here's another clue. College basketball. The Duke basketball team. She loved Coach K. I think if the Hallmark Channel had done a movie of Duke winning March Madness, mom would have been deliriously happy. And this was, she couldn't stand North Carolina and Roy Williams. I mean, and how they cheated. At least that's what mom said. I mean, one time North Carolina was beating Duke and I had stopped by to say hi while the game was on. Mom could hardly even watch me. And she was so mad at Roy Williams. She said she wanted to swear. And my mom then cussed. But North Carolina almost drove her to it. But there's my mom in her 70s for the first time, a fanatic about Duke basketball. I mean, that's just, it was so much fun seeing my mom change. And, you know, in her later years, I watched mom become not just a caregiver and not just a servant, but I watched mom become a leader. She would organize groups and events because somebody had to. People mattered and there were needs. And mom stepped up to do whatever needed to be done. Moms everywhere Keep growing. God is not done with you yet, no matter what your age. And it's the promise of the Apostle Paul that God will bring to completion the good work that he has started. That's Philippians chapter one. Moms everywhere, keep going. The best is yet to come. There's more. You inspire us. We love you and we want the best for you. So everyone, wherever you are, let's just show our moms some love right now. Hearts, hugs, Shout outs. Thank you so much for being with us on this Mother's Day. It was in 2017 that my mom had a, a massive heart attack. She had major heart surgery and after weeks she passed away. I can't imagine if mom was alive today during COVID-19 because mom was, was just, just outrageous extrovert. She loved being with people and plus she had diabetes. She would have been very, very high at risk. But you know, there's a lot of us that we do have moms at home and maybe this Mother's Day, in this really strange thing called COVID-19, we can go a little bit out of our way to give even a little more love. Let me just pray for our moms everywhere. Jesus, thank you so much for our mothers. We are grateful for their influence. We pray uh, blessing and grace and health and peace for each one of them, for mothers, for grandmothers, for mothers-to-be, uh, for mothers of all kinds. Lord, we are so grateful. May today be a very special day and may the days and weeks to come be also extremely full of love and grace and joy. We pray all this in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen, amen. God bless you guys. Have an amazing week. We are so glad that you joined us today. At Living Word, we believe that the spiritual life goes beyond Sundays. Be sure to check out our weekly devotional resource as well as ways you can grow and serve at lwccyork.com and in our church app. Every day, we post a new resource designed to help you and encourage you to grow in your faith. You can check our website or our social media channels for those video resources. And remember, if you are a student or a parent of a student, we have resources and events designed just for you by our Next Gen team. You can check those out online as well. Have a great week, and we hope to connect with you online this week and beyond. Happy Mother's Day!